In this lecture, we'll learn about breakpoints and how to use the grid system. The breakpoints cover a handful of different device sizes and are meant to be used for mobile-first web development. Bootstrap is developed with the mobile-first web design philosophy in mind. This means that the layout first take into account extra small devices like smartphones and then scale up the elements to larger devices like tablets, laptops and desktops as needed. Bootstrap is designed to accommodate five different device sizes where the initial size is for extra small devices like smartphones. When we need to adjust our layout to larger devices, we can use four different breakpoints for small devices, medium devices, large devices and extra large devices. The five different device sizes have the following prefixes which we'll see used throughout many of the components and utilities later in this course. XS for extra small, SM for small, MD for medium, LG for large and XL for extra large. The grid is wrapped in a container which we just learned about in the previous lecture. Inside this we have rows which are made up of horizontal groups of columns. Content is placed inside columns and only columns may be immediate children of rows. There are 12 columns available in the grid, which means that the width of a column can be equal to one or more of these 12 columns. The five grid tires are based on minimum widths meaning that they apply to the specified device size and all larger sizes. Column classes with numbers and device prefixes indicate the width of the column and on what breakpoint to apply it. These features, plus other features of the grid, will be much easier to understand during the following examples. Before we start the coding, please notice the custom styling in the head which is used to better see the examples in this lecture. We start with creating a div with the class container. Inside this, we will add two div tags with the class row. We can create columns with equal width by using unitless classes for all or specific breakpoints. We will add some columns and use the class call, which will give them equal width across all breakpoints. Let's have a look in the browser. To give a column a set width, we will add a number from 1 to 12 to the class. We can mix columns with equal width and columns with set width. Let's have a look in the browser. To give a column a natural width that fits its content, we use the class call auto. We can mix columns with equal width, columns with set width and columns with auto width. Let's have a look in the browser. If we want equal width columns to span multiple rows, we can divide them by inserting a div tag with the class w-100. Let's see it in the browser. If we want the same grid across all devices, we'll simply use the prefix call and call dash without any device prefixes. In this example, we will create a row with four equal width columns and a row with three columns where the first spans half of the available width 
and the last two each spans a quarter of the available width. Let's go back to the browser. We will now create an advanced grid that changes layout across different device sizes. To do this, we use the device prefixes. We want our first two columns in the first row to have full width initially, so we won't use any device prefixes. For medium sizes, we'll change it to half of the available width, and for large sizes and larger, we'll change it to a quarter of the available width. For our last two columns in the same row, We'll make them span half of the available width initially, and for large devices and larger, change this to a quarter of the available width. For all three columns in the second row, we'll make them span half of the available width initially, and then change that to a third of the available width for small devices and larger. In the browser, we'll resize the browser window to see the effect of the responsive layout. We can set the vertical alignment on rows using Flexbox Utilities. To align the columns to the top of the row, we'll add the class Align items start to the row. To align the columns to the center of the row, we will add the class Align items center to the row. To align the columns to the bottom of the row, we will add the class Align items end to the row. Let's see this in the browser. We can also set the vertical alignment on specific columns using Flexbox Utilities. To align a column to the top of a row, we will add the class Align Self Start to the column. To align a column to the center of a row, we will add the class Align Self Center to the column. To align a column to the bottom of a row, we will add the class Align Self End to the column. Let's have a look. We can set the horizontal alignment on rows where the columns don't span all of the available width. We will create five rows with three columns that each span one quarter of the available width. To align the columns to the start, we will add the class Justify Content Start to the row. To align the columns to the center, we will add the class Justified Content Center to the row. To align the columns to the end, we'll add the class Justified Content End to the row. To justify the columns with space around them, we'll add the class Justified Content Around to the row. To justify the columns with space between them, we'll add the class Justified Content Between to the row. Let's have a look in the browser. If we want to remove the gutters between columns, we can add the class No Gutters. Let's have one more look. Now we will see an example of how we can reorder our columns in a row. We will add the class Flex Last to our first column to make it appear last. We will add the class flex first to our second column to make it appear first. And we will add the class flex unordered to our last column to make it appear out of order, which in this case means in between the other two columns. Let's see this in the browser.
we can offset a column any number of columns we want and control it across the different device sizes. In our example, we'll offset our second column in the first row, two columns for medium devices and larger. We will offset both columns in the second row, three columns for large devices and larger. And we will offset the column in the last row, six columns for small devices and larger. In the browser, we'll resize the browser window so we can see these changes happening across the different device sizes. In a similar way to offsets, we can push and pull the individual columns. In our example, we'll push the first column four columns for medium devices and larger and pull the second column eight columns for medium devices and larger. In this way the two columns will actually swap. Let's see this in action in the browser. It's possible to nest a grid inside another grid. Here we see two different grids. We'll cut the second grid, excluding the container div, and paste it inside our first column in the first grid. In the browser we can now see the behavior of nested grids when we resize the browser window. We have now learned about breakpoints and how to use the grid system. Go on and continue with the coding exercises which will help you learn how to use the breakpoints and the grid system. In the next lecture, we'll learn how to create media objects.